Good afternoon and welcome to Markets Today. I am your host, Mbithe Mwema. It's a very interesting day for us um, this day. We want to be looking at the banks to understand what are valuations doing, especially from 2016 when the rate cap decision was actually affected. This is important because the government, I mean, rather, parliament has come back from recess. It resumed yesterday. And we want to just understand what is what is happening and where what are they going to be looking at when they're considering the rate cap discussion and what they actually expect to do. So that's what we're going to be keeping you abreast on. We'll also be looking at the NSC market and seeing what are multiples doing with regards again to the banks, as well as what, what happened to turnover overnight. Where did the market close yesterday? And remember, the key thing that we were looking out for was Safaricom. There was an ex-dividend that happened on Monday, the record date, and it went uh, ex-dividend actually yesterday. What happened to price? What were investors doing? Who was buying and who was actually selling out? But we have a very exciting conversation lined up for you later on today. Second half of the year is here we are with us we're actually about to start getting into the final quarter of the year but for you as an investor where can you actually make money what has been the trend with the different asset classes today we want to speak to a market practitioner this will be mr pius who will be sitting with us today he is the ceo of napo capital pius mashiri will be helping us understand what assets have been actually making money where have assets been allocated from with regards to the assets that the pension industry is actually collecting and what is his outlook with regards to the fixed income market as well as the equities market and the thing that we are always looking out for is it the NSC 20 is actually on a 10-year low is it a buying opportunity is it a selling opportunity is it a wait and see opportunity but before we get into that conversation we take you back to the bank valuations a very interesting conversation that's about to um, we want to get into today we have our graphics team putting up the valuations courtesy of Diane Blair. But before that comes, we give you an update of what happened with the NSC turnover. 586 million was traded yesterday. This was about 30% higher than the previous day. Safaricom was pushing numbers with regards to volume with lots of foreign investors coming into the market and we saw local investors actually getting out of the stock. Safaricom yesterday corrected its price to, uh, to, to actually accommodate what happened with regards to the dividend. It had a cumulative dividend of 1.87 shillings. This was made up of one point two five shillings ordinary dividend and 0 0.62 shillings as a, as a special dividend that was paid out bringing it to 1.87 shillings for the period the record date was monday the price corrected to 26.2 shillings we had actually shown you that yesterday we we're expecting it to correct to that level when the market opened we saw it go as low as 26.05 shillings so 2620 is really where it's trading and that makes sense with regards to the current dividend but we keep hearing conversations with people saying that they are yet to tap into two key opportunities with regards to earnings uh, potential. That's the data opportunity, uh, fiber to the home. That's a key thing that we keep hearing, as well as not touching the, not actually tapping into the opportunity that M-Pesa with regards to mobile payments actually has to offer. So in as far as its price to earnings ratio, it's pretty steep, but then people say there's much more upside in this particular stock. So if the NSC 20 is on an all-time low over the last decade, maybe Safaricom is certainly worth looking at, especially given the correction that we have seen. But let's look at the banks. Now, if you recall, 2016 rate cap was actually passed. Before then, we wanted to understand what was happening to the valuations then. They used to trade at, I think, about the industry was at about 1.3, 1.5 times with regards to valuation. Today, the industry is trading at about 0 0.88 times with regards to the valuation in the industry. That's about 22% discount to the book value of the sector. What has been happening? So to date, this is the status with regards to the finance bill. Finance bill has been uh, was presented in Parliament with regards to the outlook of the industry, and the proposal was to actually remove the rate cap with regards to the ceiling, which today is at four percentage points above the central bank rate, which puts the lending rate at about 13 percent. Now, there's been debate on whether this will happen or whether this will not happen. For the last one year, the Kenya Bankers Association has actually championed that conversation with regards to acting as a liaison office and a liaison party between the banking industry and the Parliament, just trying to sensitize the parliament the effects of actually capping the cost of credit with regards to actually limiting access to credit with a, uh, especially focusing on the private sector which is the SME sector. SME sector is 75% of the GDP in this country. So if they're starved of credit then you can already feel the trickle down effect with not too many businesses doing well. So it's been a back and forth conversation and my, in my opinion I think it has actually yielded fruit because the last time when the parliamentarians came and said no we will not remove the rate cap they had not been that kind of engagement but I think over the last 12 months there's been 
been a deliberate engagement. Two key things have come out of this engagement. One proposal has been focus on a risk-based pricing methodology. Look at the risk that your, uh, your client actually carries and then be able to price that without having the, ce the Central Bank of Kenya regulate that pricing. The other uh, proposal that we have had is a proposal to actually change the reference rate. Rather than using the Central Bank rate, have something that looks similar to the LIBOR, which is what they're proposing to be called the NIBOR, that actually reflects the cost of money, the short end of the, uh, of the yield curve, as well as maybe the medium term um, end of the yield curve, just to be able to capture all the dynamics of the money market. That said, I keep saying I actually expect a bit of a adjustment with regards to the rate cap. I don't think it will remain as it is. It would be ideal if it was actually removed for people in this sector because then we can begin to see credit going out. But I think that'd be a minor adjustment. Now the question, which is what we're trying to answer today, we have the banking sector trading at 0.88 times, and that's the price to book for the entire sector. What happens if this conversation happens? Another key thing that you need to look out for, we had a conversation with the chief executive officer, rather the chief finance officer at KCB, and he indicated to us that October, November is potentially the time we need to look out for any decision with regards to this. Before then, Who's the most expensive bank today? Equity Bank, 1.5 times. Prior to the rate cap, equity would even trade as high as 2.2 times. So a discount that we're actually beginning to see there. And the question is, certainly it will not correct to 2.2 times book, but is there an opportunity of a 20 to 30% upside if this conversation is indeed happening and if anything changes? Another interesting one that we have actually seen pick up is Barclays Bank and Standard Chartered Bank. Both are trading at 1.4 times book, slightly below what we're seeing with Equity Bank. But what we're seeing is driving the demand is really the dividend yield. Prices have come off from the sector and we're seeing Barclays giving a dividend yield of 10% and we have Standard Chartered giving a dividend yield of 9.7%. Those are the two highest paying banks in the industry and that uh, certainly explains why their valuation has actually been increasing at least over the last one year. Another interesting bank that we keep looking at is uh, KCB Bank. It's still trading at one times book. This valuation does not take into effect the dilution effect and the merged financials that, uh, that incorporate National Bank of Kenya. But we've actually done an evaluation and we shared this with you yesterday. Nothing much changes. I think if you adjust for the added assets as well as the 4.5% dilution, it remains at more or less book value. But there is some value there with regards to its dividend yield paying 8.7 times. And that's a very rich dividend yield that we're seeing there. The other key column that we would like to pull your attention to really is the return on equity and what the sector is doing. Prior to 2016, we used to 20, 23% was not something that was far-fetched. Today, I think it's on the, the extreme, my extreme right, you have the, your return on equity. We're seeing Equity Bank has always had the highest uh, return on equity in the sector. Today, it's down to 20.3%. We have KCB at 20.9%. And actually for KCB, they think they can actually get to 23% outside of the rate cap. And this is just including the assets that they're acquiring from National Bank of Kenya. So already some upside there without anything happening on the rate cap. The other counter that we want to look out for is Cooperative Bank. It's, turning, uh, it's at a return on equity of 18.4%. So the question here is really, what happens to this sector? If the rate cap is removed, do we see ourselves going back to 23 25%? It's neither here or there, but it really depends on the actual, the individual bank and what's happening at the individual bank level. For one, we see a more upside on equity bank. We have talked to many people, investors on both sides, on the sell and the, base, the buy side. They keep saying that equity has been giving a lot of its money to the to the government of Kenya, and that has actually been having a dampened their return on equity to 20.3%. It has a good uh, branch network and distribution network with regards to the SME sector. So if they're able to price risk, then the upside would certainly come first and foremost to Equity Bank, followed by KCB Bank and Cooperative Bank before you go to the other banks that tend to be wholesale funded and have their, 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 their business models focused on a corporate banking model. So there you have it. Just an update of what's happening to the sector. It's trading at a discount. We certainly see buy opportunities there but still a bit more work needs to be done with regards to creating scenarios. And then an update on what's happening in Parliament. The finance bill has gone through the first reading and the second reading. It's now sitting at the departmental level. Stakeholders have already been engaged and asked what their opinions are. This also includes the Kenya Bankers Association as well as other bankers and people who are partisan to this conversation. So this commentary has already been engaged and we are expecting a report at least once um, uh, MPs come back into session. And we will be looking out for the order papers just to see when to expect this conversation of the third reading, which is really where the debate happens and we get to see whether this conversation will go along or it will not go along.
certainly a lot happening in the banking sector today, but then that's just an overview for you. Now, as we come to towards the end of the uh, third quarter of this year, getting into the fourth quarter, what should your focus be? Certainly the equities have not done the best. We've seen more allocation into the fixed income, but we want to hear from Pius Mashiri who runs Nabo Capital. Where is the opportunity? Now we are coming from a point where the yield curve has been coming off and the central bank has sufficient liquidity to be able to reject some of the more expensive paper that they get from the domestic market. So what next for you? Should you keep focusing on fixed income? Should you be looking at equities? And are there particular counters that you need to look out for? We take on this conversation just after the break. We are always running live on our Metropole page and that's on Facebook as well as on YouTube. We